Hi, I'm Bart from Nomad Boat Building and welcome to my boat shop. But today we talk about yacht interiors and one aspect where you can save a little bit of money and get some really nice results. One thing we have a lot of in boats is our drop panels. Now, these exist anywhere that you need to have a horizontal surface, uh, usually with upholstery on top. So your seats and your, your bunks or berths. Often in a boat, the, uh, the reason we're using those is because we build a very simple framework running longitudinally with a few bulkheads going athwart ship and there's voids underneath that we can use for storage but they're really funky shapes so you don't want to build a, a proper enclosed cabinet per se because it takes up a lot of space and it's a lot of extra work so you build this simple framework but then you need to cover it with something and we usually want to be able to open everything up as much as possible to get at the stuff that's inside if we haven't put doors on the front or just to clean things out so this is a good example of a drop board and it's got big holes in it for ventilation that allows air to circulate through these closed compartments. Got a friend whose sailboat's V-berth uh, needs new panels underneath the cushions. And when you're measuring for these things, you, you don't, what you don't want to do is take a, a pad and your tape measure and try and take measurements for these panels because you're never going to get it accurate enough. Um, boats are generally not very symmetrical. You've got curved surfaces and uh, funky angles all over the place. So what I recommend is you make patterns using door skin. And we sometimes refer to this as spiling. And what you do is you want to build these in place. So I use a hot glue gun. I go into the boat with some door skin cut to about three inches wide. And it helps to have a few pieces ripped down to maybe an inch or an inch and a half wide as well. For um, Sometimes you can't get into nooks and crannies with your pattern very easily. And they don't have to be super accurate, but you do want to have them sort of nest up against the surfaces that your panel are, is going to encounter. Uh, I don't worry about getting angles in the corners correct. You just sort of rough cut them and um, with the idea that you'll just be extending lines to, to form where corners might be. In the case of these guys, uh, I had a long bunk where the cushions go, about six foot long or so, and there's a bulkhead in the middle of it. And I knew I wanted to break these panels down from a six foot panel, which would be one piece, down to two pieces, three foot panels. And I wanted to break it along this bulkhead that's there. So when you open one up, you've got a storage compartment under this one. You open it up, there's a storage compartment under that one. And there's this division in between the two. So when I made my pattern for those, I made sure to lay a piece of this door skin along that bulkhead so that I could record where that was gonna go. Now what you don't wanna do is try and make these things too tight because a drop board, by its very nature, it, it's not going to be on hinges or anything. Um, it's going to be loose for the most part, and you want a little bit of slop in there to, in order to remove it easily, to lift it up easily, get it out of the way. And, um, and so I would recommend backing off on your patterns by maybe, maybe just about an eighth of an inch all the way around or a bit less. We don't want it too sloppy. We want the workmanship to look good. But um, it's important to just to make sure that you're not going to get it's not going to get jammed in there. Also, it's a good idea to cut your panels down to what you think is the finished shape, and stop there, take them to the boat, and drop them in place, and make sure that they look good. Because sometimes there's a little bit of miscommunication between the pattern making and the cutting at, back in the workshop. So if you've just cut them to the what you think is the finished shape, dropped them in before you do any other work you may find you need to shave off a little bit, which is exactly what I had to do with these. And I didn't invest a whole bunch of time into sanding out the edges or any of that sort of stuff. Lastly, ventilation holes are pretty important uh, in boats. You want air to be able to move around. So I've made these nice and large, large enough that you can get your fingers into to lift it up. Also, I've made multiple holes so that air can, move, can circulate around. Now my idea is before the cushions go on here, I wanna put a fibrous pad on here that allows air to move through it. These days on houses they're putting rain screen matting on underneath siding which is like a, a, a plastic Brillo pad if you will. So you can get some of this stuff that's made for this purpose. So we want to put that on there and so these big holes are going to allow air to come up through the bottom of that that storage compartment and pass underneath these uh, underneath the mattresses and um, and keep the whole thing from getting funky. In a boat, stands to reason you want to use marine grade products throughout and marine grade plywood is a logical choice. 
However, if you don't need something to necessarily be immersed in water, marine grade plywood is a fair bit of extra expense and isn't always absolutely necessary. You do want a good exterior grade plywood or one that has waterproof glues in it. What I've used for these drop boards is this product which is known as Medium Density Overlay or MDO. Uh, there's some brand names, one of them is Creazone, another one is Duraply, but in each case it's almost always the same thing. It's a fur plywood with a craft paper bonded to one side. This craft paper is usually impregnated with a phenolic resin. That makes it a little bit harder and it makes it uh, essentially fairly waterproof. Now I've tested this stuff using it for say a set of garage doors I had one time where I left it out for months unprotected and it stood up really really well so I'm quite confident in using this. You can get it two-sided, it's kind of hard to find, it's usually unavailable. This stuff which is used by sign makers more often is just one-sided so the back side we need to deal with and um, the usual defects will occur in this material so you'll get loose knots or empty knots, you'll get checks in the veneer and sometimes we'll get some a little bit of some small voids in the core where one of these defects exists. So that's not great and we need to deal with that. However, this product is about half the price of the equivalent thickness of marine grade plywood. So the way I'm dealing with this, you could fiberglass it. That's pretty pricey in terms of material use and time. You could just fill these voids with a putty of some description, either thickened epoxy or bondo or some other sort of hardening putty. Um, and then paint it, but that's a lot of steps. So what I'm going to use is an arborite laminate. And um, this is a, a lighter one which costs a little bit less. It's you know, my, my supplier calls it uh, post form. And the idea is that it's, it's fairly thin and flexible so you could wrap it around curved objects. We don't really need to do that, but it saves a few dollars and achieves what I need, which is a good smooth washable surface without breaking the bank. Now, normally you would apply laminate with contact cement, and I have done that in this case. Um, that's partially because I had a whole bunch to do, I wanted to get them done quickly, and I just don't have enough flat work surfaces to bond that to it with any other means. So another way to do it is using epoxy. And if you use epoxy, it gives you a great opportunity to fill these voids that are a problem. So you can apply your thickened epoxy to one of these panels. I would suggest you would put thickened epoxy onto the back of the laminate and you lay that on a smooth work surface. And then on the back of the plywood you would just do an unthickened coat to make sure that this is getting properly saturated. You put them together, put weight on this surface, and then once you've done that there's going to be a certain amount of squeeze out. And you could take that squeeze out and take a brush and you could paint that up onto the edge of the plywood, thereby sealing it up as you go. And if there's any little voids, you could mix up a little bit that's a little more thickened to work it into those voids. And then when you're done, you would just trim away this material and you get a nice result. Now you could put laminate on both sides and that would be fine. Um, but if you're going to do that, you're spending more than you have to on the medium density overlay and you could just use an exterior grade plywood or a select grade, you still want to make sure that those veneers are made with a waterproof glue. In most cases, in plants that produce fir plywood, they often use the same glue throughout the whole process. But check. You might find out it's fine, you might find out it isn't. If you chose to go with the MDO, you could apply paint to this now smooth craft paper surface and you'll get a good finish in fairly few coats. However, I wanted to get it done a little bit faster in this case and I didn't really want a smooth painted finish. So I wanted it to have a little bit of tooth because cushions are going to go on top of this. If it's too slippery, it doesn't really help matters. So what I've chosen to do is I've just used some polyurethane varnish and I've painted it onto these panels and then I've rubbed it down. I've basically taken lint-free cloth and I've taken off as much of that polyurethane as possible. I first waited for it to penetrate into the craft paper and you could see the color change as I was doing that. So once I had a consistent dark color, then I took off all the excess. And it's a bit like using a finishing oil. And in fact, I could have used a finishing oil for doing that, but I didn't happen to have one on hand. The result is a product that doesn't feel like there's a finish on there, but I am confident that this has been sealed up nicely and I was able to seal the edges at the same time that I did that. So I'm happy with these results. I really like the color of the Creazone. Um, 
this sort of brown color it feels very nice and earthy and, and uh, natural finish and I think that's going to look good in a boat. Now the laminate on the back side um, what's really nice about that is that it's very highly cleanable. On the inside of a compartment under a bunk you can imagine it's fairly cold air up against the hull and where it meets the cushions there's going to be some warm air there so there's always going to be a little bit of condensation you're worrying about. If you find condensation or, or you know mildew on the back side you could clean that off nicely and get rid of that. Now why would we say this is on a budget? Well uh, first of all we're spending half as much on this medium density overlay as opposed to buying a marine grade plywood. And um, you're going to pay a little bit more than this than if you just bought an exterior grade fir plywood but this phenolic resin impregnated craft paper is really going to, you know, that's a nice smooth surface, that's a paintable surface, you can consider it almost finished. Now the back side is rough and um, you might say that, you know, a Spending uh, half as much again on some laminate really drives the price back up and you have to question about you know the savings over using a marine grade. However, to uh, fix this up with uh, paint would require skimming this out with something like Bondo or thickened epoxy to deal with all of these voids to get a nice smooth finish and then several coats of paint. By the time you spent the money on that, you spent as much as you would have on this laminate. Now, even if it was a marine grade plywood, it still doesn't have a finish on it. You still need to do something. And so um, you're still going to be applying paint or varnish over top of that. And again, back to multiple coats. This little technique I used with just rubbing on, rubbing on one thin coat onto this, you wouldn't do that with any other kind of plywood because it wouldn't look very good. But on this, because this is such a smooth finish to start with, it looks great. This stuff is only about 40 bucks a sheet. Um, so maybe I could have saved a bit more by buying this exterior grade fur and then applying laminate to both sides and that yes that could have been an option however most other varieties of fur aren't as smooth as this when you uh, get them if it's an exterior grade it's usually intended for sheeting and it's usually a lot rougher and often has a real potato chip feel to it whereas this tends to be fairly flat when you get it and, and that's a bonus you don't have to use an exterior grade, you could certainly use an interior grade. It is inside of a yacht, unless that yacht has sunk, and if it has, almost everything inside is going to be trashed anyway. Um, you could get away with that, but I think this is a nice option, and um, the difference in price isn't huge. You'd probably spend about $40, $45 for a sheet of an exterior grade, or $50 for a sheet of select grade plywood of this thickness, and this is roughly $65 for the medium density overlay. So it's not a huge difference. Those are Canadian prices. I think it's well worth it. And the scraps from this are great around the workshop for making jigs and things because this nice smooth surface is beautiful for being able to build accurate things on top of. Okay, Ed. Yeah. So I've been calling all these panels drop panels or drop boards. Right. Now, I just wanted to point out that what you're hanging on to right now are drop boards. They are drop But in the true nautical tradition of having three conflicting terms for every item on the boat. So those are companion way drop boards as opposed to interior drop boards, right. we'll say. Got it. Why are they called drop, drop boards, Ed? Because they drop in place. Exactly. And, and they're much better than having doors yeah. uh, when you're out in rough seas. Exactly. Because you can put them in and it'll take on a fair bit of uh, pressure. Hang on, except for all the stuff that comes squirting in that little uh, well, vent. You <laughs> do you have a separate one for a storm? Uh, no, but I should make another one. Right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe even a, um, one of those uh, Lexan ones. Yeah. Because then you can see out. Yeah, that would be even that would be even better. Yeah, get, get they're it. They're strong. I mean, these things will take on anything. Oh yeah, I get a big half inch sheet of Lexan and mm. whack it in there. Yep. Cool. Okay, let's have some tea and then get onto the job. All right, good. Let's do it. Okay, so here's our V berth, and these are the existing cushions, which are this disgusting vinyl. So on the back side of them, you can see they've put these little teeny tiny little ventilation holes in here, which are kind of useless. And um, and then the panel and the cushion all in one, which is fine, except when they get disgusting. And now you got to replace the whole thing, and you probably don't want to reuse the panel. So we're switching over to 
separate cushions and panels. Also, if you want to get this out of the boat to air it out or something, um, the berth becomes wide open and kind of useless in the interim. So we changed it all up. And down here we also have, these are weather cloths, so if you're in heavy seas you can pull them out and they uh, lash up to these these D-rings up here in the ceiling to keep you from rolling out of your berth. We're going to chuck these pieces of garbage out and uh, stick our drop boards in. And we also have to fit out the, um, the cabinet here with uh, a cleat to hold the centerpiece because this came without a centerpiece. So I've already did one of them over on this side, so I've got to do one over on this side. I've got this trapezoidal panel that has to fit into this area, and to facilitate that, I'm installing these cleats. And so I've countersunk and I've dropped in some number 10 screws. Uh, you want screws that are fairly beefy that can take a load, and don't don't be too shy about them. I've used four across here, which is probably plenty. And now I just need, I need to bung these holes, and you can do that with glue, for, of course, but I do, I'm working on the yacht here just for a few hours, and I want to get out sooner rather than later. So I'm going to install these bungs with thickened shellac. So I've just taken some typical orange shellac, and if you let it get thick like molasses, it makes an excellent adhesive. What's nice about it is it sets up fairly quickly, but you can break the bond very easily. So for for a bung that you may in the future want to pull out and not cause any destruction to the wood around it, you want a very light adhesive, so this shellac does a beautiful job of that. Always make sure you align your grain on the bung with the grain of the material you're putting it into. The way you thicken shellac is you simply leave it exposed to air, so you're letting all the alcohol evaporate off of it. If you're working with shellac flakes, you could always use less alcohol to dissolve those flakes. Add a little alcohol every now and then as it gets stiff. In fact, a couple days ago this was rock hard. And I just added a small squirt of alcohol to the jar. Give it a stir once in a while. So there we go. So I'll leave this for about 15 minutes and that'll set up enough that I can knock off the bungs with a chisel and clean them up. And any of this uh, shellac that's showing proud or if it's still sticky, I don't have to worry about it. You can come back later on with a cloth with alcohol and clean it right off because that's the beauty of shellac. It's always dissolvable by alcohol. So it's been about 20 minutes since I put these in and the shellac is still tacky but that's fine. It's uh, You just want it to kind of set up a little bit. So what I want to do is quickly going with the grain, knock the bulk of the bung off and you don't want to go tight to this cleat here. You want to leave about an eighth of an inch proud. I'm just going to use the heel of my palm. Okay, and a little bit more. And once I get it closer, then I go cross grain. And I go at a bit of an angle outward. I don't want the grain to dive in on me by accident. And as I get closer and closer, I can start to feel the face of that cleat with my chisel. And you might have to switch directions, depending on which way the grain is running. You might be you want it to run out towards the surface. And you can see the shellac is kind of smearing on the surface there. But if I take a cloth with some alcohol, it's getting a bit dry now, but it cleans right up. doesn't look great from that perspective, but to so wipe that down and maybe use a very bit of fine sandpaper over the whole surface and then hit it with your finishing oil, that'll blend right in. So here we go. The panels are in place and they're looking pretty good to me. The teak that's in here needs a little bit of refinishing still, but all in all, happy with what I see. It all dropped in, dropped in nicely. It's just a, it's a funny bit right here. That's because the weather cloth is sitting over top of that bulkhead inside. And then I think the owner is going to take those out anyway. Yeah, the, the fit is just about right. You can flip it up here, get at the stuff underneath. That's good. This little guy's got a good fit here. Get that out of the way quickly. I'm just a tiny bit snug here in one corner. That's okay.
not too worried about that. Okay, I know this wasn't a how-to video and uh, not the most glamorous stuff, but you know, it is a realistic portion of the kind of work I do as a professional bolt builder in my day-to-day -day life. If you like what you saw and you want to see some more, then by all means, uh, hit that like button, subscribe, um, leave me a comment. I want to know what you're interested in. I really enjoy making these videos, but it's tough to fit them into the workday, so come and join me on Patreon. Uh, with your support, I can put more emphasis into video making and um, produce projects that are of interest to you. I want to do some full, detailed, step-by-step -step videos on building boats from scratch. You can be part of that. You can help decide what projects we're going to get into. And we can even discuss projects that you've got on the go that you need a little bit of advice on. Happy to do it. See you at Patreon. <laughs> I'm Mark from Nomad Boat Building and welcome to the boat shop. Hi, I'm Mark from Nomad Boat Building and welcome to the... Hi, I'm Mark from No... Hi, I'm Mark from Nomad... I'm Mark from Nomad Boat... Help the guy out, throw a couple of bucks my way and uh, not just sort of scraping the bottom. That's... that's all wrong. <laughs>